it can be so overwhelming when you get to a plant shop or a garden center and you are surrounded by houseplants and have no idea which one is the right one to bring home. Which one of you guys want to come home with me, right? Listen, I get it. At this point, I've had hundreds of houseplants. I spent thousands of dollars on houseplants in my career. And I've talked to thousands of plant parents around the world. And what I have found when it comes to killing plants, it's not overwatering. It's not underwatering. It's not a lack of understanding about your life. That is the top plant killer. It's not picking the right plants to begin with. You set yourself up for failure sometimes, right? If you pick the wrong plant that isn't going to thrive with your lifestyle. So I've created the Plant Parent Personality Test inspired by the thousands of plant parents that I've talked to and these different personality types that I've seen come up over and over and over again and curated lists of plants that are perfect for the personality because you need to choose plants that work for you and not the other way around. You can't be hustling for your plants. Your plants need to hustle for you to have a thriving indoor oasis you've dreamed of. So today, let's go through the different personality archetypes who you might be, and then I will give you a list of plants that are perfect for you. Welcome. Growing joy. Hi, plant friends. My name's Maria. I am here to help you care for plants successfully, but more importantly, grow joy while doing so. And there is no nothing that is a bigger joy killer than bringing a plant home that you think is going to thrive in your home and killing it, right? Killing plants is a bummer. That's not going to help you grow joy. And I want to help you have success. So I've created the Plant Parent Personality Test. It's free. It takes two minutes to complete. Once you take it, you're going to understand your personality archetype and have a curated list of plants specifically for you. But I wanted to do a video on the personality archetypes to do a little bit of a deeper dive on understanding once you get those results, like how it actually applies to you. So I figured since I'm at the gorgeous Homestead Gardens and we are, it is filled to the brim with the most glorious houseplants I've ever seen, I thought it would be fun to kind of work through and actually show you examples of all sorts of plants that you can use for your personality. So let's dive in. I think we will begin with the mindful plant parent. Ah, the mindful plant parent. I'm a mindful plant parent. Actually, at this point in my life, I'm half mindful, half low maintenance. But the mindful plant parent is someone who already understands that plants help you grow joy. They get that plant care is self-care. They might have a bumper sticker that says that already. But they use plants not just as decor pieces in their house. They use them as mindfulness tools, right? You probably have an established self-care routine. You probably have an established plant care routine, and ideally you've coupled that. We have whole chapters in my book about it. But because of this, you want to engage with your plants on a daily basis. Moisture-loving plants are going to be awesome for that. So I highly recommend plants that are in the prayer plant family. Also, prayer plants move their leaves up and down like they're praying. If you're a mindful plant parent, you'll probably appreciate that. Calathea, Maranta, um, ferns are also amazing. A lot of people can't keep ferns alive because if you let them dry out once, they will be very unhappy and the mindful plant parents will not do that. So maybe you want to try ferns. I also suggest plants with heart-shaped leaves like alocasias or philodendrons or gorgeous pothos, right? You can turn having heart-shaped leaves into a gratitude practice. Every time you see them, use it as a visual cue to have a moment of gratitude or surround yourself with heart-shaped plants in your morning practice, and it will help you grow joy, and it'll help you connect with your plants and make sure that your plants are thriving for them to grow joy as well. So now let's move on to the opposite of the mindful plant parent, which is the low-maintenance plant parent. All right, the low-maintenance plant parent. This is someone who wants plants in their house but does not have time to be their servant, right? Maybe you travel a lot. Maybe you're a consultant and you're traveling for work. Maybe you have little kids or kid babies or pet babies that you're chasing around in addition to taking care of your plant babies. You want the plants, but you don't want the work. You need plants that are kind of like set it and forget it, which I totally get. So you're good at not overwatering your plants. You're probably prone to underwatering your plants, which is why I'm going to say don't have any of the plants that I just said for mindful plant parents and stick to these plants instead. Drought tolerant plants, right? The snake plant is going to be your best friend. The gorgeous thing about snake plants is they come in such a wide variety of gorgeous leaf shapes and variegation. So go for the snake plant. Go for the philodendron and the pothos. I have left my philodendron for weeks on end without watering them, and they're totally fine. Philodendron, pothos, spider plants. I had a listener once tell me that they had a spider plant baby that like got clipped and was put in a closet and it rooted itself in a closet for three months. This plant is so hardy. It's so hard to kill. Chinese evergreens are great options for you. 
the ZZ plant is an amazing option for you. And the foliage is kind of wild and wacky and super fun. And last but not least, of course, my favorite, the Monstera. Gosh, do I love the Monstera for the low maintenance plant parent. They grow, they give you those epic jungle vibes, and they really aren't going to take that much of your time as long as you're watering them occasionally. Speaking of the Monstera and jungle vibes, I think this is the perfect segue to move into the design-based plant parent. The design-based plant parent is the culprit for the rise of the fiddle leaf fig. Every design magazine at some point had a fiddle leaf fig in the corner of every aesthetically put together home space, right? So the design-based plant parent is all about aesthetic, all about vibes. And for a long time, the fiddle leaf fig was the statement plant that you would have. But the fiddle leaf fig is not the easiest plant to take care of. So I would say that a lot of design-based plant parents want that one statuesque plant, right? You're not going for a sea of a million plants. You're going for one statement plant. There are so many great options beyond the ficus, right? You can go for a big anthurium. You could have epic cacti, provided that you have the light that you need. But a large euphorbia or a large cacti could be so amazing. Uh, rubber plants are incredible options. You can, oopsies. you can grow rubber plants to be huge trees. Birds of Paradise, Dracaena. There's so many amazing Dracaena that would make epic statement plants. So if you're looking for that epic large statement plant, do some Googling. There's a wide variety available to you. But the design-based plant parent is all about interesting leaf shape blooms, right? So we have this gorgeous anthurium over here that has this gorgeous flower, right? Not only does it put off leaves that change colors as it develops, but it actually blooms. And anthuriums will bloom pretty frequently provided you give it like bright indirect light. They don't even need that much light to bloom and they're so happy and relatively hardy. Anthuriums are a great option for you. Philodendron with interesting shaped leaves, right? Obviously the Monstera is going to give you those jungle vibes, but this leaf, this leaf shape of this philodendron, the philodendron genus has such a wide variety of amazing leaf shape. You should watch our video on philodendrons if you're interested in that. You could also go for variegation on plants, right? If you're interested in using your your leaves as visual interest texture in your space, maybe consider a variegated version of a plant that you have, right? So the normal version is the Monstera, but this is the gorgeous Thai constellation Monstera that will bring some visual interest into your home. But the design-based plant parent is all about aesthetics. The only thing I want to say to design-based plant parents is I understand that it's about the aesthetics, but it's also about the plant care. So if you have a dark corner, your fiddle leaf fig is not going to thrive there. It's probably going to die and you're going to be super bummed out. So if you have a dark corner and you want that big statement plant, go for a snake plant or a low light tolerant plant, right? I know that you're all about the aesthetics, but make sure that you're pairing the right plants for your lighting opportunity and environment, okay? Moving on to the Curious Collector. Gotta catch them all from Pokemon, you know, Pokemon, gotta catch them all. The Curious Collector is all about getting the more rare curious varieties, right? They're curious. They see a plant and they don't need to just get one begonia. They need to get all the begonias in the genius. And this is what I recommend for curious collectors. Don't just have a wide collection of all sorts of random stuff. Go deep in one genus and see how many begonias you can get or how many philodendrons you can get. In a curious collector plant collection, you don't see the normal philodendron. You're going to see the philodendron tortum. Or you're going to see the philodendron ring of fire all of the different varieties of leaf shape and uh, variegation that are harder to find. The curious collector might shop on Etsy or in Facebook marketplaces or, you know, on more rare plant sites. They might want to go to now a lot of garden centers, including Homestead, has a rare plant section. So they're probably beelining for the rare plant section. Succulents are an amazing genus or type of plant that you could collect because there's such a wide variety, right? So if you're a low maintenance curious collector plant parent, I would say go for succulents. If you're more of a mindful curious collector plant parent, go for begonias, go for, you know, ferns. You could also dive deep into all sorts of blooming plants. You could collect African violets and orchids. You could have orchids that have different types of scents, right? So the world is your oyster. Go catch them all, but be very intentional about how you collect because I do see with a lot of curious collector plant parents, they deal with plant parent overwhelm. I have a whole episode on my podcast about this if you're interested in it, but they could collect too many and then all of a sudden find that they don't have the bandwidth to care for all the plants. So all of the plants start doing poorly, some die, and then they kind of just burn out. And I see a lot of curious collectors having been really into plants and then totally kind of abandoned their plant passion because of that. 
So be mindful, be careful, be very intentional as you grow your plant collection and when you bring new plants home. And last but not least, the urban farmer. The urban farmer, last but not least, a very specific sub niche of the plant parent personality people. It's someone who grows indoors, but they want to grow food or things that they can use. They want their plants to get even more of a bang for buck than just aesthetics. Usually the urban farmer has a small little balcony garden or window sills that they're growing herbs on. Herbs are an amazing option for the urban farmer or frankly, anyone because they smell beautiful. You can cook with them and they will thrive on a windowsill as long as it gets six to eight hours of direct light. So if you have a Southern facing windowsill, you're gonna be so happy. Herbs are great. Lemongrass, you can grow citrus. We have a whole video on how to grow citrus indoors. I've been doing it for years. I absolutely love it. If you don't want to grow food, but you end up being an urban farmer, I would also suggest growing flowers. You can grow anthurium flowers, kalanchoe or kalanchoe, however you pronounce this, or orchids. And you can have flowers that you can even cut and add into bouquets. You can make a bouquet of a flower and a bunch of herbs that you grow that you can give to people, right? So I would say get into the plants that bloom or plants you can eat with. If you're growing indoors without grow lights, herbs and lettuce are gonna be your best friends. Or go full send and do a full hydroponic setup in your house the way I did with my lettuce grow. Grow cucumbers, tomatoes, herbs, anything beyond your wildest dreams. You can check out that video as well. Those are my five plant parent personalities. I hope you take the test. Like I said, it takes two minutes to complete. It's totally free. You will get a curated list of specific plants. And I think we even go into bolding what plants are widely available and what plants are a little bit harder to find. It's all free. We'll have the link in the description of the video. I hope this episode helped. I'm here to help you continue growing joy.